Okay, welcome back. And um, we start this morning with People's Climate Match. It's an issue that uh, government around the world, they have debated, they have discussed, and at times they all go in different directions because they're looking at the bottom line in terms of their economy, but not particularly at the future of the earth in which we exist at the moment. A lot of people are only interested in the here and now, but there are some people who are interested in what do we leave as this climate that we're looking at? What do we leave in terms of the future of the earth for the generations yet unborn? So I guess that might be what's at the back of the mind of those who have put together the People's Climate Match, PCM as it is called, uh, a large-scale activist event to advocate global action against climate change. I will not do all of the talking this morning, so I guess I would have to introduce yeah. our guest we, in the studio. We have studio. the evangelist in yes, the house. Yes, the environmental the evangelist. evangelist. <laughs> um, the one we should be calling evangelist of environment, Desmond Majakodumi. Great to have you this well, morning. Well, how do I respond to that? <laughs> Praise the Lord and care for the creation. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, yes, uh, it's an honor to, to be here. Good to have you here. And uh, on the other side <laughs> is uh, Barrister Phillips Obwese, who is an environmental advocate. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Now there's no <laughs> hallelujah for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just the, uh, what the lawyers talk about is well, more about uh, the legal part of it. It's just uh, about the... Uh, Activism. Activism and yeah. uh, the advocacy, advocacy that you carry out. Okay, let me start with um, our environmental evangelist, uh, Desmond Magic. Desmond, let's, let's look at this issue of the people's climate change, uh, the people's climate march. Mm. What is it going to achieve that all of the other marches and all of the other efforts are pushing to the front burner the issue of climate change? This has the potential of actually pushing the whole issue right to the forefront because it's a prelude to what is termed as the Emergency Conference on Climate Change. Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Nations, earlier this year decided that he needed to call an emergency conference and bring as many world leaders as possible to the United Nations specifically to discuss how they're going to control this climate change scenario which is running out of control. He also encouraged activist groups and environmental NGOs and just the general population to come out and march and express themselves, in fact, raise their voice. And that's part of the slogan, that's one of the slogans for this year from the United Nations is raise your voice, not the sea level. Because they had come to the conclusion that, as you rightly said, a lot of these other conferences, a lot of these other sort of demonstrations had not got good results. Simply because, you know, politicians are wired to respond to the voice of the people. You know, they are there to serve the people, at least the legitimate <laughs> politicians. You have some that are totally illegitimate and that there has nothing to do with the voice of the people, but that's another discussion. So they came to the conclusion that in order to inspire these politicians to make the right decisions, they needed to see a large mass of people. They needed to see the people come out en masse, mm -hmm. raising their voices and demanding action because they've had conferences before they've had all sorts of talk 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 yes we should do this yes we should do that knowing very well that things are almost getting out of hand for the environment <clears throat> but because the politicians didn't see the people responding the way that they need to see the people responding they did not take the necessary action so the people's march and it's one of the biggest in fact it will be the largest march for the environment that this planet has ever known. What kind of numbers will you be expecting Whoa! to see in this? In New York alone, the, the, it, could be, it could be up to the millions. It could be. And it's going to be global as well. It could be. And it's going to be a peaceful, very, very friendly, friendly march. And this will now come on Sunday all over the world, but particularly New York. And then the conference starts on Monday and Tuesday. 
And, and they're going to read out the figures to the conference. They're going to show clips of the match. And guess what? Ban Ki-moon himself is going to lock arms with some of the leaders of the match and he's going to march with them, which is unprecedented. You know, usually yes. because of protocol, you know, that yeah, sort of the thing. UN yes, Secretary you know, General would yeah, not. Yeah, because yeah. The, man, the man knows the implications. He knows the problem. Yes, you said something about the climate change issues mm. running out of control. Yes. Let, let's talk about this and especially the issues in Nigeria. Right. Well, I will bring out a, an equation. And this equation is uh, 400 plus ppm equals 2c equals catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're the only one that can that do that mathematical that. solution. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the 400 plus, plus ppm, ppm okay, to be we're PPM talking of um, parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. You know, and this atmosphere, when we, when we study it, and I, I know very, very little about it, but the little I do know, it just, it just marvels me. That's one of the reasons why I've become an evangelist, because when I look at the way the atmosphere is constructed and the incredible things that this atmosphere does for this earth and makes the earth habitable, it makes me just want to praise the creator of the earth and the atmosphere. So in the atmosphere, the normal level or the normal ratio of carbon dioxide has always been 280 parts per million. That is 280 molecules of carbon dioxide for every other million molecules of different atmospheric gases, nitrogen, hydrogen, so on. And, but over the last 200 years, we humans, through our industrial revolution and through mainly burning of fossil fuel, have raised this ratio from 280 to uh -huh. 4 which is known as the threshold limit because the scientists have come to the incontrovertible conclusion that it was by bringing it up to 350 over the last uh, few years that we've now reached this uh, global warming of almost one degree which is causing climate change. Now 400 ppm will likely bring a global warming of 2 degrees centigrade. And when we go over the threshold of that 2 degrees centigrade, we now unleash catastrophic climatic conditions on planet Earth. She wasn't designed to have that kind of heat trapped within the atmosphere. And this is why Ban Ki-moon, having seen all the results of the scientists coming in, especially the results from the International Panel for Climate Change, which was released earlier this year, which shows the implications of raising it beyond two degrees centigrade. He hit the alarm button and said, look, we must have an emergency conference on the climate. So that's the explanation of 400 plus C equals 2 C equals disaster. <laughs> By the grace of God, we won't get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me come to uh, Philip's uh, voice. Let, the issue for some of us now on this particular uh, subject is on the streets of Lagos, on the streets of Abuja, in Kano, in Kaduna, in Port Harcourt, in Umwahe, you name it, there is almost no awareness of this issue of climate change. It is extremely limited. You're an environmental advocate. And we're talking of millions of people potentially marching in New York, in Los Angeles, in California, and other parts of America, and possibly in Europe, in UK, and so on. What is it we need to do to engage the common man to realize the fossil burning and all the other things that destroy the environment are things that one, as a private citizen, we have to stop and then encourage the government to put in place the legislation that would enforce the fact that you can no longer do those things. Well, um, as a matter of fact, um, like uh, the environmental evangelist says, <laughs> the United Nations has done so much with respect to the environment. And um, the Secretary General, over the years in the saddle, he has waited for a feedbacks. He has waited for feedbacks from 
so much investment, discussions, negotiations, and so on and so forth. And the feedbacks he was getting wasn't something uh, encouraging. encouraging at all. And the man said, what? We've got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. We've got to do something about it. And the reason is that uh, leaders worldwide have not uh, actually understood the mindset of the United Nations. So um, he decided to put this call across, like he said. He pressed the emergency button. Something has to be done. The glo global leaders have to take up arms against, I mean, climate, climate change. And um, that's the essence of the whole essence of this. Not time for discussions, not time for negotiations. The United Nations want governments globally to come up with innovative ideas, concrete, tangible, visible ideas to tackle this issue. Now, uh, to do that, because that is the whole, if the governments at different levels globally have taken up arms against climate change, it would have gone down. It would have simmered down to the people at the grassroots level, which comes to your question. Mm. The governments have failed to do the things they ought to do. And that is why the United Nations became alarmed. My challenge as uh, one that's been involved with the environment is that is the failure to step down advocacy, to step down environmental education, to bring it down. Uh, Governor Fashola does so much with respect to the environment and climate change. But you see, like I always say, these things are usually elitist. I was at an event, I think, uh, December 6th last year, organized by the Ministry of the Environment, Lagos. Uh, and uh, I told them that we have to start scaling down advocacy. When you organize events and everybody comes with ties and, in, I mean, the same set of people you always invite and things like that, the people at the grassroots level don't get to feel the impact of what you do. That is why we have to scale it down, bring it down to a level via environmental